2003, a presidential decree declared the month of May as National Heritage Month in recognition of the need to create among the people a consciousness, respect, and pride for the legacies of Filipino cultural history and love of country. The month-long celebration of both the tangible and intangible aspects of our heritage became the impetus for a group of private individuals to come together. Private citizens, all of them, but with an abiding love for culture and their own spheres of influence. Thus was born the Filipino Heritage Festival Incorporated, a non-stock, non-profit organization that sought to unify both government agencies and the private sector and out the resources in the service of Philippine culture. Their vision, a simple one, unity through heritage. For its first foray into live production, the FHFI chose an ambitious project, a tribute to the most prolific of the Filipino contemporary composers from the mid-20th century onwards. Ernani Cuenco, George Canseco, Willie Cruz, Jose Marie Chan, Ryan Cayabyab. Their music, honored and interpreted by equally legendary performers, an auspicious debut production indeed.
the successful foray into pop music, the FHFI steered in another direction, the reimagining of the great ethno-epic of the Maranao people, the Derangin, an important intangible heritage. This epic poem tells of the exploits of the noble prince Bantugan, an exemplary leader and role model for all Maranao. But this time, the chant came to life through contemporary ballet.
after the immortal epic of Meranau, the FHFI then felt it was time to listen to the chants of the Cordillera. The Hudhud of the Ifugao and the Ulalim of the Kalinga. This project was important and memorable because it marked the first time that these chants would be performed by their rightful owners and interpreters on the stage of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. The FHFI reached out to the Hudhud chanters of Legawe, both young and old, and the Kalinga performers trained by Gawad Mandilikan ng Bayan Alonso Saklag. They were brought down to Manila for a special performance. But this production was made even more memorable because the narratives of the chants were interpreted also by contemporary artists, both groups, indigenous and contemporary, meeting on stage for a journey worthy of epics.
for the centennial of Serizal's birth, the FHFI invited all the leading theater and dance groups to contribute to a tribute to the national hero. Many of these groups, like the Philippine Educational Theater Foundation, Ballet Philippines, and Dulaang UP, had Rizal-inspired works in their repertoires. The vision was to bring the most moving of these excerpts together in one production. A rich harvest of insights and interpretations that filtered Rizal's writing through the sensibilities of young Filipino artists. had succumbed were drowned in the oil they didn't frighten me my mother continued her reading I listened anxiously and the fate of the two insects interested me intensely the child has become a man Maaring do'y makarating kayong taglay pa ang kulay. Subalit, ang bangoy wala na marahil at kusang pumapanaw. Wala na ang samyo sa talulot ninyo'y iningatang yaman. Pagkat malayo na sa lupang sa inyo'y nagbigay ng buhay, iwing halimuyak ang inyong kaluluwa at di malilisan, ni malilimot pa ang langit na saksi ng kayo'y isila.
FHFI has never shied away from honoring popular culture, finding in these trends a reflection of the evolving Pinoy aesthetic and psyche. Thus, a new ballet that derived its material from the heroes, heroines, and villains of comics culture was a most welcome break, a novel take, and an important original work in itself.
With the publication of the late Senator Edgardo Ongara's scholarly work, The World of the Manila Acapulco Galleons, the FHFI felt inspired to create a stage performance that could encapsulate the great maritime history of the Manila Acapulco galleon trade. But such an important work of scholarship needed to be communicated differently transformed for the stage, enhanced by the interpretative powers of contemporary artists working in a multimedia setting to convey the narrative and hopefully to inspire the audience to start their own research. San Pedro, a pioneering galleon, reached New Spain on 8 October 1565 after having crossed the Pacific.
These excerpts are from only six productions, but there are more that the FHFI has produced. Along with live performances, there have been exhibitions, outreach programs, workshops, exposure trips. Through the youth forums held from 2016 to 2019, meaningful channels for dialogue and communication have been opened between cultural workers, teachers, and the youth of different provinces. With each exchange of views and learnings, the young are taught the importance of safeguarding the aspects of their heritage that may have been taken for granted for too long. Through 17 years of commitment to Philippine culture, the Filipino Heritage Festival Incorporated has proven that the government and the private sector can come together to make culture a vital part of our people's lives. The FHFI sees itself as a catalyst that can harness the resources of both the government's cultural agencies and the private institutions in ways that are beneficial to the one cause, that of our culture. Even during the pandemic, the FHFI has found ways of using social media and technology to bring its productions to a wider audience through the internet. Previous efforts have honored the Philippine national artist in both music and dance. Plans are now underway for a series of productions that will honor our national artists for theater, literature, and other fields. For the members of the Filipino Heritage Festival Incorporated, it takes more than just managerial skill or vision or tireless efforts to go on. It takes conviction, paninindigan, the strength and commitment to keep on celebrating this rich and infinite heritage.